didn't do any uh, examples, I believe. Yeah. Although we had a look at the formula. Uh, Jerry, could you turn the light off, please? Thank you. What? Leave Jerry alone. Okay. Right, let's see, where are we at now? Very good. Let me open up. What was the last slide I gave you, please? Right hand rule. The right hand rule, did you? And you wrote that down? Yeah, yeah. I wrote that. Mm -hmm. Good, good, okay. No, 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 physics, then maths, okay? We did this, we did this. Oh, we did this, yeah. We did this. And we did this. Right hand row. Yeah? Okay, so next, um, a little tip, help with these questions. So, normally when the flux changes, it's because either the B or the A changes, but for our problems, not both. So, at least they make this question a, a little bit easier in the exam, or rather I should say this question could be harder in the exam, but they make it a bit easier by changing only the B or the A in the formula BA is equal to flux. So what does changing the B or the A look like? For example, um, imagine this is my uh, conductor, okay, so this is a piece of metal, and I have a magnet, and uh, I put the magnet over it, and then I take it away. So what is changing here, the B or the A? B. The B. What is it changing from? <coughs> Presently, zero. zero Tesla, and let's say this is one Tesla. So it goes from zero to one. To one. one. Okay? <coughs> and, but there are other things you can do, like if I have the magnet here, um, and that even if I did this, if this was like a copper wire or something, if I folded this, then I'm changing the A. Mm -hmm. yep. and of course, that's a silly thing to do. We don't change the A like this. Usually what happens when we change the A is we have a big magnetic field, and then there's a conductor moving inside the field. Okay? So, like, for example, maybe this, there's a field running... Uh, let's say a field running this way, so F B. Okay, so B is that way. Okay, and let's say I move this uh, up in the field or down, it doesn't matter. So the force is this way, so the current will run along this direction. Okay, uh, if I drop this here, what's changing? Well, is the B changing? No, the B isn't changing because it's a big constant field. So what is changing? Yeah, but what exactly? What, what, how is the A changing? <coughs> because it's still the same shape. Mm -hmm. So how is the A changing? Wait. Huh? Yeah, but like, uh, because of the B, but how exactly? <coughs> you know, picture, here's the field. And here's the conductor. I'll, I'll draw it here. Uh, here's the conductor, let's just put it there, a little, little rectangular piece of metal. And the field is going this way, and the conductor is falling down. Well, the B is not changing, the B is fixed. So it must be that the A is changing, but you know, what exactly? For what? Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, thanks. Well, I'll just switch these around. Any ideas? What the A might be here in this picture? No? That's exactly it. As this falls, you can imagine it's like drawn an area here, isn't it? It's like drawn an area in space. So when you look at this, which equals this, which is changing? The A. The B is constant, so it's just a change in A. Okay, if I just divide this by T, this is B times the uh, rate of change of area per time. So 
So let's make it easy, okay? We'll make it easy. This falls at one meter per second. Now, and let's also make it easy. Let's say it's one meter this way. Now, of course, it's not one meter per second because as it falls, it will be moving faster. So in the first second, it falls from here to here, and the area it makes is one meter squared. So each second, how much area is made? One meter squared. So this piece here will be one meter squared, or rather one meter squared per second. That's how much area is being made, being drawn. Okay, And if you grab this, and stopped it from falling, what would happen to this value here? It would become zero if you grabbed it. So then what would happen to the voltage? Zero. So it only has the voltage uh, while it's falling. Now you might have actually done experiments in class in high school where you have a, a copper pipe and you drop a magnet in it. And as the magnet's falling, it, it makes the current. And then when it hits the ground, no more current then. So anyways, my advice is, either the B or the A changes. So it's either going to be because it's A times the change in B, or B times the change in A. Uh, this change in B is if the B changes, and obviously this is if the area changes, obviously. Uh, but that change in area is not because the area actually changes, but rather because it's being, what we say, swept out. It's like we're drawing the area in space. That's what I mean by a swept out area. And I already drew this. Now you want to make some notes about that, especially the area. Can you actually say area? Huh? Can you actually say area? Can we say area? Yeah. Why not? What would we say instead? So it is uh, this shape. Yeah. Like a, a copper wire. Yeah. yeah. And it's an area, but it's an area being swept out. It's a swept out area. It's not an area like this. It's an area because it's being drawn in space. Yeah. Oh dear. Thanks, Chu. Um, what are they doing outside? Can you see? No. You can't see what they're doing? They're caught on the tree. <laughs> Sounds like it. What's wrong, Bruce? What this is? Yeah, I'll, I'll draw it again. So imagine what? <laughs> this is copper wire. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Copper wire? And you drop it. So it falls. Yeah. You can imagine uh -huh. it makes a shape like this. This is uh, what I mean by the change in the area. Because first there was no area, yeah. and now we have an area. Yeah. It's only in our mind. When you move it, it's like you have the area here. When you move it. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, this multiplied by this, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because when it's like this, we have no area, and then when it moves, also yeah, it's like it's making an area as it moves. Yeah. This is what we mean. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. 
my beautiful picture. Mm. The upper one. Oh, this. Have you done this before, Sean? Mm. I mean, with the area. Yeah. Yeah. Monica, have you seen this before in physics? No. You know of Faraday's law with the induction, or, or you've done that, but you've not used the formula with the change over the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. Uh, this is all great, but we better look at some examples now. Okay, so an insulated copper wire is wrapped around a metal pipe which is 30 centimeters long and 5 centimeters wide. So let me draw that first. So we have a pipe. And it's 30 centimeters long and 5 centimeters wide. Okay? The wire is wrapped around the pipe 100 times. Okay, so we put a wire around this 100 times. Okay. Uh, a 1.5 Tesla magnet is moving through the pipe over a time of 3 seconds. What is the average EMF induced through the copper wire at the moment the magnet is inside the pipe? So we start off with the magnet here and then uh, 3 seconds later the magnet is outside. 3 seconds later. And I want to know when the magnet is here in the middle, what is the voltage that we have? Yeah? We get the idea? Uh, that would be the maximum voltage. Oh, I should actually say well, I, I can't remember if I said this last time. I don't think I said that. But in this formula, this is actually really like an average voltage. Because if you think about it, at the very beginning, there is no voltage. Yeah. And then as the magnet moves through it, then we get a voltage. Yeah. And then when it leaves, then we get no voltage. So... The voltage is always changing, but you know that because remember when we did the AC graph, we have the voltage like this. So if you're wondering what exactly this voltage is, it's the average voltage. So it's the voltage on average from the start to the middle in this picture. Mm. In real life, will the voltage in the middle be more or less than this number? More. It'll be more. And at the beginning, will the voltage be more or less than this number? Less. Less. So the voltage graph, if this is voltage and this is time, it looks like this. It increases and then decreases again. Yeah. Uh, I'm only looking at this much when it gets to the middle. This is the maximum. This is the max. I believe so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so what's the time here? It's 1.5 seconds. And I just put that in to try and trick you. Yeah, because it's three seconds to move through the pipe. I was trying to trick you. I said it's three seconds later it leaves the pipe. But my question was, what's the voltage when the magnet is in the middle of the pipe? So I just tried to trick you a little bit. The time is only 1.5. Yeah? Okay. So in this formula here, um, what I, I don't care about the minus for the moment. Uh, I just want to know how big the voltage is, what's the size of it, so I won't care about the minus. Uh, what's the N? 100. 100. Now, uh, what's changing here, the, the, the B or the A? A. No, B. It's the B that changes. Because first there is no magnetic field and now there is a magnetic field. Uh, okay, what's the area here? It'll be pi or squared. 
Mm-hmm. And they have changed. Huh? Uh, no, the A is not changing. Because it's the area, the area is this. This area is not changing. The pipe is not moving. It's very confusing. I know, it's very confusing. The B is not changing. Uh, speed is constant, yeah. Ah oh, no no speed is constant. You just you, you hold it and you move it in. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, what's the time? One point five. One point five. Now, what is the change in the B? Well, you could think about it like this: the change in the B is the B at the end minus the B at the start. Yeah. So what's the B at the end? No. And remember, this is the end and this is the start. Uh, start yeah. 1.5. And start is 0. So here is 1.5. It, it's it's 1.5 Tesla at the end and 0 Tesla at the start. Here the magnet's not in yet. And here the magnet is fully in. Yeah. So yeah. why is the line of the uh, Because... Here. Why... Yeah? Go on, Sean. Yeah, what are you saying? Here it's 1.5, yes. and here it's 0. It's not inside yes. it at the beginning. Why is it 1.5? Oh, I said in the question, it's a 1.5 magnet. Yeah. In the question, I gave you the, the size, the 100, the time, and the magnetic field density in the question. Okay, so if this is 1.5, that's kind of nice because then these two cancel. Uh, so the answer will be whatever that times that is, please. Uh, yeah, I just did this. One over six, give me as a decimal. Zero point one nine six volts. So in other words, one hundred ninety six millivolts. Is that all? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we are finding the Uh No, I think uh, I asked what is the average EMF. Okay. Oh, wait. Pause. Are you telling me that the 196 is the max, or are you asking me, are we finding the max? Oh, are we finding the max? No, we're just finding the average. But it is a good question. How would you find the max? Oh, what's max? No. Yes. One over yeah. So, two. Yeah, remember the average voltage is equal to the maximum voltage divided by root 2. Yes. This is the average, so if we multiply it by root 2. Uh, do you know what? That's a great question. I'm going to make that part B of the question. What is the maximum voltage achieved? Uh, so what is that if we multiply that by root 2? About 2, 5? 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Yeah, I know that. 277 oh. seven millivolts. There. And what's the minimum voltage? Zero. Yes. Zero, of course. So if you want to picture the graph uh, there's time, there's voltage, there's 1.5 seconds, that's 277, and it goes like this. And on average, it's 196 millivolts, if you wanted to have a picture in your mind of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then it starts to decrease again, until it's back at zero, when the magnet has left. Oh. Okay, continue. Continue or do you need to work this down? Yes. Now, uh, we should actually see...
which which way is the current flowing here? So if I go back to my picture, um, which way will the current flow? Hmm? Correct. Yeah. Hmm? This is Lenz's law. Lenz's law says the but current changing, right? when you no 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 the magnetic field the magnet is always moving this direction I mean the pole is changing when you put in and then you go out no you put the north end in first and the north end comes out yeah but when you put north towards the I'll uh, come back first yeah and yeah it's and over here and then when you pull out it is and it is <laughs> yeah it's and over here What are you saying? The lens law. It is different poles when we put in and pull out, right? When the north goes in this... Oh, you're saying... The uh, yeah, the picture, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't recall the picture. Do I have it on this slide? Yeah, yeah. Lens law. Was it before or after this? Before. Was it before oh. this? Before. So... If we go back to the picture before this, uh, there we go. Yeah. So if we put the north end in, the current comes out. Yeah. But in this picture here, when it's the, the magnet's being taken out, in this picture the south end is coming out. Whereas in the question I did, the north end is coming out. Well, what about here at the end? The end is here, so here is supposed to be coming out. Are we talking about the magnetic fields created around? Yeah, the pole. I don't care about those because uh, all I care about is is the magnet going in or out, and am I putting the north end in or the south end in? So in this picture, if the north end goes in, then the current will come out this way. And you notice at the end, the north end will come out. In this picture here, the south end is coming out. So that this isn't this isn't the opposite. Like this isn't the end picture of this one. This is like a different situation. This is taking the south end out of the, the solenoid of the magnet. Uh, if this magnet was flipped around the other way, and I was taking it out, the current would go the other way. So instead of uh, going in, it would go that way, that right. Yeah, so it's a pole changing. It's a it way is inside. changing. I mean, this is and this is and number of changing. Do you know, I believe so actually. Yeah, no, I yeah. get what you're saying, does it flip around yeah. in the middle? Because north end goes in and, and the current comes out, and then the. Oh, this is getting hard in my brain. Um, this one here, the south end comes out, but in the picture I just drew, the north end comes out, yeah, which forward. means the current is still going in, but in this one's coming out. Goodness, so actually. I think you're right, it changes. But then if it... <laughs> <laughs> the current flow. If it changes then the current goes negative. So my picture like this is wrong. It's correct, it just changes. Yeah, but it... This happens sooner than I thought. Oh. Because if it changes then it's become a minus. Mm -hmm. Which means it was a plus earlier. Very good, Lee! Uh, my you see, he thinks deeply about it. It's good. Uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, here's the voltage here in millivolts, and here's the time here in seconds. So uh, I was incorrect when I said that the maximum happens at 1.5. Uh, it kind of looks like it can't be, because you notice that it changed direction at the 1.5, so it must have became zero there in the middle. So the graph was like this, and then it's zero again at the end when the magnet comes out. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course you realise that doesn't change any of my facts I just said. The maximum is still 277 and the average is still 196. Uh, the only difference is in my head I was picturing the maximum happening in the middle. Oh, it happens uh, before a quarter, a middle of the middle. Yeah. 
Uh, very good, Lee. Thank you for thinking about that. It affects nothing. The numbers are still the same. Huh? Yeah, the current flips around. Yeah. No, di no, the only difference is in my graph. A moment ago I drew my graph uh, like this at 1.5. Instead, it's, at, it's like this. It has to be zero because, as Lee was saying, it changes direction in the middle. So if it goes from positive to negative, it must be zero first. You know, you can't have the current go positive and then change to negative. It has to go positive, zero, negative. No, Sean's not happy now. Lee's quite happy though. <laughs> it came at the expense of Sean and his happiness. Uh. Yeah, the big it still goes from zero and then 1.5 and then back to zero when you take the magnet out. So the average voltage and the maximum voltage do not change. But the minimum is still zero. We, we, the, the negative does. It, it's just the direction, so the, it's still a zero voltage at its lowest. Like I said, you don't care if the voltage is negative, because it will still kill you. So, you know, if I said, oh, so don't worry, the voltage is minus 10,000, so that's so small, so low, you know. It's the fact that it is 10,000 that's the problem, so the minus is not as important for this. For the graph? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the minimum doesn't happen at 1.5. It must happen at about 0 0.75 is the maximum. Ah, uh, the minimum happens at 0, 1.5, and 3. It looks like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But I don't actually think. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't actually think the graph will be as smooth as this. I think it would be more like this. Mm -hmm. The graph, I drew it smoothly like this, but I think really it'd be more of a straight line. No, that's because in that AC generator, it was a nice smooth curve because it was caused by a rotating wheel. But this one, yeah, this one's not rotating, it's caused by a steady movement of a magnet. Oh no, in the exam they would expect you to use root 2. What? Because that's the only formula they provide. So they don't want you making your own formula. I'm just trying to give you, in real life, of course, the answer is not simple because it depends on the shape of the graph. And the shape of the graph could be straight or it could be curved. Most of the time it's curved because it's usually because something is rotating. And that's why you would use root 2. And when we go to operating the gym, like in university, we have to Oh, in university you will learn the precise way to get the average, not using any special formula. And a bit like, uh, a bit like in math class, you use integration to get the area precisely. At uh, university you will use integration to get the average precisely, regardless of the shape. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the shape is, you can get the average precisely. Right now we have only one formula for average which we're going to use. Yeah. Okay, let's continue now. Next example. Right. I think you're getting the idea. I'm going to do this one last example, but I want you to try it. A plane takes off heading towards Santa Claus at the North Pole. The magnetic flux density for the Earth is tiny. This is what it is for the Earth. It's 0 0.07 millitesla. Yes. That's the real value for the Earth. The wingspan of the plane is 68.5 meters, so that's how long the plane is, mm -hmm. like the, the, the plane, the airplane. Wingspan. Wingspan, you know wingspan? How wide the airplane is. Oh, don't make me draw. The wing. The wing, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 O
<laughs> That's the wingspan. Oh, yeah. oh, wingspan. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say that now. <laughs> right. The wingspan is 68.5 meters, and the climbing speed, I should say, is the climbing speed is 600 meters per second. I think I made that too big. That's, well, no, maybe not. Uh -huh. the, okay, maybe that is too big. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna change it. Uh, what would, how, how quickly could a plane climb? Well, how, how, what height? Which plane? Yeah, well, like take a passenger plane. Well, an F twenty, an F twenty two, I don't think is sixty eight point five meter wingspan. In a second. Yes, but in one second. Six hundred meters. Google. You are Google. Type, uh, Sean. Yeah. Type in a uh, climbing speed of seven four seven. Seven four seven is a passenger aircraft. Can you type that into Monica? Climbing speed of a seven four seven. We, I'd like to use real numbers because then when the next the next time you take a flight, you can imagine what the voltage is in the plane caused by its movement. Now, of course, it only works if the plane is moving north. Do you have the climbing speed? You like one two hundred meters per second? Yeah. Uh, alternatively, Monica, you could give me the top speed if you have that. Yeah. Go on, what is it taking off? Give me. Can you take out your phone? These guys are taking way too long. I just want to. I either want to know the climbing speed or the top speed of a 747. 30,000 feet. That's 10,000. Hey, that's pretty fast. That's 10,000 meters about in 45 seconds. So hitting 10,000 divided by 45, what's that? It has a thousand meters. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. 45. While you have your phone open, can you type in wingspan of 747? Sixty, okay, not sixty-eight then. Right. So you're all clear. We have our plane. Look. Here's the plane. And this is the wing. Yes. And there's the North Pole. So which way is the magnetic field? Yeah. That way. Mm -hmm. So using the right hand rule, uh, F, B, I, this is pointing that way. Now which way is the force? Up or down? Mm -hmm. Up. So because the plane is taken off. Mm -hmm. So which way is the current then? It'll be going this way, right? Yeah. Now if that's the North Pole where Santa lives, what direction is this? Yeah. This is east. And this is west. If Santa is in the north. Yeah. So, net result. Listen, as the plane is taken off and heading to the north, there will be a current in the wings of the plane. There will be a current you can actually measure that runs across the plane because it is moving inside of a magnetic field, in this case the Earth. Yeah, no, it's only because it's only if the plane is heading to the north because of this, yeah. all right? If the plane was heading east or west, you get no current. Or if the plane is heading south, so north or south, you'll get a current in the wing. I don't know why I have a rule, is the right hand right? Anyways, what I want you to do is I want you to try and calculate this voltage before I do it. Oh, well, why is going in and left has no current? Because by using the right-hand rule, uh, you can't have a situation where the 
Yeah, they have to be perpendicular. Oh. Uh, F oh, B I. Uh, so yeah, the it's the F and the B. They're perpendicular. You can't have the you can't have them. You can't have anything parallel. They all have to be perpendicular. Oh. And if they are at an angle, you can use uh, the cos theta. Yeah. Try this. This is it here. A plane takes off heading towards Santa Claus at the North Pole. The magnetic flux density for the Earth is 0.07 millitesla. The wingspan of the plane is 60 meters and the climbing speed is 250 meters per second. What is the direction and size of the adduced EMF in the wings while the plane is climbing? I'll open it back up, sorry. one because we don't usually wrap wires around planes. Now, I don't know how things are in Kenya, but just speaking generally. Hmm? Hmm. I didn't mean anything bad by it. Huh? Well, why don't you calculate how big it is to see if it's worth utilizing? Well, what is the A? Good question. And the graph of the A? Oh, oh this is what a triangle. So what, what is this shit? Oh, you're thinking about this the wrong way, guys. Thinking about it the wrong way. Let me have a look at it now. It 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 is it is an area. Okay, we're all clear. Which is changing, the B or the A? A. Correct. Yeah. So th look, there's just there's the ground. Okay. I'm looking at this picture from the side. All right. Uh, this is North Pole. Santa lives here, mm -hmm. uh, and then this direction is east, and then towards me is west. So I'll draw the plane from the side. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I put a little propeller on it. Or I can I can do this better. There, like this. Yeah. 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 Now, the plane is taken off. So let me just draw the picture for one second, just to make it easy. In one second, what has the plane done? Huh? Yeah, by how much? 250 meters, wasn't it? So this here is 250 meters. Yeah. Now, this is where you have to be very clear. This direction, uh, I said this here, didn't I? 250. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. No. No, no, no. High is. Climbing speed means vertical. Yeah. Yeah. Now think about this. At the beginning, there is no area, and then at the end, we've drawn out this big area in one second. Yeah. Two fifty by sixty. We made this in one area, uh, in one second. Oh. Yeah. Now you were thinking. You were thinking things like this. Now, why is this wrong? Because we only care about this one. Because this is the one which is perpendicular to the field. The one which is parallel to the field doesn't do anything. 
We don't care about it. We never care about the ones parallel to the field. We only care about the one which is perpendicular to the field. So this area on the ground uh, is not important. Now you realise that's a pretty big area, but it's also a very small B. So, yes. Voltage is uh, B, change in A over time. Now, we're looking at one second times, so it's just going to be this, which is just going to be, what's it, 0 0.07 times 10 to the minus 3 times 60 times 250. Right, what's that please? What's this, please? What is this, please? One point zero five volts. About a volt. Can't use that. All the client could use that for is, what could you do with a volt? You could have uh, power your calculator. That's what you can do. Uh, now, there's a disadvantage here though. It, it only has this induced voltage while it is climbing. The moment the plane stops climbing and reaches uh, its altitude, this voltage is gone. Because you're no longer drawing out the area. This area is caused by the takeoff. As soon as the plane is traveling like this, no more area. Mm -hmm. Only happens during takeoff and landing. So where is the power M. M, yeah. Milli Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Should be weaker, but to be honest, I don't think there's any noticeable difference at 10 kilometers. I think you need to be more like 100 kilometers. At 10 kilometers, it should still be about the same as zero kilometers. I 10 from zero to 10, it's basically constant. I'd say it only starts decreasing after 10. I'd say it should be even, I think 0 to 20 it should even be about the same. And then after 20 it would start maybe to decrease. No, to the east. The current we said earlier will be induced and traveling to the east. And then I suppose... No. Uh, now to be careful, Lee! You have to be careful, unfortunately, where north and south can be swapped around because the magnetic north and the north pole of the earth are two different things, which means your east and west get swapped. So when I say east, uh, I don't mean east of the magnetic field, I mean east, earth east, which would be west of the magnetic field. Okay. Yeah. Uh, interesting, I think, but quite small, only one volt. But about a volt. Yes, yes. If you uh, <laughs> let's see what you would have to do. If you uh, clipped a wire here, and you know had a voltmeter hanging out the back of the plane. Uh, as it's taken off and landing, you would see this increase up to one volt. But I you don't have to have the, you don't have you don't have to have the voltmeter outside the plane. You could have the voltmeter running inside the plane and just have the ends connected to the tips. Then you can measure the voltage. Now, what if you increase the number of coils at the wing? 
So increase the volume. Uh, I've found news. If you wrap a wing with copper wire, <laughs> it loses somewhat its ability to fly. You know, it's an, it's an aerodynamic thing. Yeah. Is it inside? Yeah, you can put it on the inside. For what? Nothing. I think, I, to be honest, I think the only application of this is if you have a voltmeter running inside of it, this could be part of your redundant systems. For example, ha, how does the plane know its altitude, its height? Well, there's a couple of ways it can know its altitude, mm -hmm. but mostly, it, mostly it's probably just GPS. Now, suppose the GPS system fails, how else could it know its altitude? Well, it could know it from air pressure. But if there's a storm approaching, then the air pressure would not be reliable. Uh, but you could use something with the voltmeter. You know, imagine that there was a fault with the plane, and the plane started to descend. Uh, <laughs> well, now the voltmeter could be built in and connected to the autopilot, you know. Like, if the plane suddenly starts to descend, because there's an error with the autopilot, the computer system error, you could have the second system, the voltmeter. If the voltmeter registers a voltage, then it means the plane is climbing or descending, when it shouldn't be, perhaps, you know? <laughs> yes, true. But that's <laughs> what I mean. It's, uh, it's true, but, that, but even that's not a problem, because you, still, you can actually just have a second voltmeter run in this direction. So it means, regardless of the direction of the plane, if it's climbing or, or descending, one of the voltmeters will register. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. No. One, one volt is not going to Increase do anything. Increase the number of that one thousand, so you have one thousand. But the price you pay for this is the extra weight in the copper, which means you'll be losing energy because you have more weight to carry, you know, uh, it wouldn't be worth it, you know, like I think it's something like each kilogram, you know, requires so much extra fuel, so you'd be losing that one, I'm afraid. Apart from the submarine, what else is the sound thing where you can build a sound thing and it's not The airplanes might use that as a backup system to the GPS. Uh, but it be ships and submarines, mostly, I'd say. Uh, okay, can you try these questions now for a couple of minutes? I want you to say manhole. Oh, well. One sec, I'll just... Uh, hold on, Sean. Thank you. I should say manhole. Okay. Chew. Chew. Can you open the window, please? It's really hot now, thanks. You have four questions. This is four questions. Oh. Because the rainbow color is always there as the screen is being refreshed, 
your camera is better able than your eyes to capture this. We can't see it. The colours are being drawn on the screen all the time. The red, the green and blue are being drawn separately, I think. We can't see it because they blur together. But a camera that maybe has the ability to take a photo in a, a frame of say 10 milliseconds, you know, if it takes 50 milliseconds to draw the screen and the camera can capture at 10 milliseconds, then the camera can capture the screen changing. And we can see the red, green, blue being drawn. I think this, I, I think this is what's happening. It's the same thing if you did it with the TV. I think if you took a picture of a TV screen, you'd get the same effect. Yeah. Are you trying this, yeah. Jerry? Yeah. Keep your hands to yourself, thank you. <laughs> now, what I'm being sneaky about in question one is I'm making you think about which part of the story has the voltage. Is it when I turn the manhole cover or is it when I lift up the manhole cover? Lift up. Think carefully about it. It is Not important. What Not is this parallel when you split one Well, my whole cover is circular. And so, there is no direction issue because the current will be induced in whatever direction. Because it's circular, it will always happen. Because it's not like a copper wire that has to be perpendicular to the field. Because it's a circle, mm -hmm. you'll get the current in the direction which is perpendicular. You know, okay. it's like the advantage of having a circular conductor is that it points in all directions. So if we think of these as like hundreds of copper wires in all directions, I just care about the current <coughs> induced in the one which runs perpendicular. So there is no direction issue in the first one okay. of north, south, east, and west. Do you all understand the first one? It's the manhole. You yes. turn it and lift it off the ground. Yeah. The circle. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you do one after the other or both at the same time. Like you unscrew it. Like you want to, you want to get in. So you unscrew it and lift it up. Yeah, to so like unlock it. Oh, I thought it split. Like no! Huh? Who does this to manhole cover? Oh. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Huh? yes. Well, I never see one. Okay. <laughs> what? You're from Malaysia, isn't it? Yeah. You have manholes over there, don't you? So how do you open a manhole cover? Do you, like, flip it this way? Yeah, you can't open this way. I know you can't. Maybe in China, but not here. Okay. What? <laughs> this one? You turn it. 
Yeah. And lift it. Try it. You don't need to try it. And you do. And lock it. Yeah, unlock it. You, you take the, no, well. the tool, click it in. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. What is a mental yeah. color? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. You can undo this. No, no, no. You have a special metal rod that you click into it, and you turn it and lift it. Oh, oh in the umbrella? Yeah, so if this is a metal. No, 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 no. This is on the ground, right? Yeah. So you have this tool, yeah. and you come along and you go. Yeah, like open up one. Turn and lift. Yeah. That's how. So in my story, it takes uh, four seconds and two seconds. Yeah. So four seconds is not important. Yeah. Very I good. No Very good. The four seconds is not important. Correct. It's. Uh -huh. I tried to trick you. Yeah. It's uh. Do you? It's the two seconds that you care about. Yes. So the arrow is like a cylinder. No. It's just Lee, Lee. It's exactly the same as the airplane. It's the climbing area. The rectangle you draw as it climbs through the air. Just like with the airplane. You know, people were thinking maybe some kind of triangle or some shape like this. No, because you only care about vertical height gain. <laughs> so it's like the rectangle you draw as you lift it. Uh, but it is really shit. We, we, we just 2.5. Correct. Yeah. 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 Correct. It's a two and a half centimeters by half a meter. Oh. Yeah. Good question. What's the end? One. Just one. Because it's just one conductor. One. Yeah. Just huh? one. Just one manhole. Yeah. Oh. You understand now? Yeah. Good. I don't know. It is right. Because the iron is at uh, 0.5, yeah. yeah. minus 2, correct. Yeah, the thickness is 2.5, so when you're unlocking the manhole cover, you just move it up by how, mo how thick it is. Yeah, because if it's 2.5 thick, it means it's 2.5 into the earth. So if you want to remove it, you only have to lift it that high. So it's 2.5 times 0.5? Yes. But I mean, but that's centimeters. Yeah, just convert it into meters. Yeah. 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 Not even pi. No. No. Because just like with the airplane, you don't care about the shape. We only cared about the rectangle it makes as you lift it. Yeah. It's always rectangle. Yeah. Well, it's always a rectangle because. Um, uh, well, yeah, I suppose the only time it wouldn't be a rectangle is if, if the manhole was shaped like this. That If the manhole had a little dip in it, that when you lift it up, instead of moving up like this, it's like you're moving a shape up like this. So it would make an area like this instead of like this. But, I mean, that's ridiculous to have in the exam. They're always going to keep it as rectangles moving through space. The N is one. There is oh. one manhole cover. Yes. Yes. When I make the worksheet for this, I will put a picture of a manhole cover and somebody lifting it. Uh, I've started work on the semester two workbook, so. I hope sometime next week to have caught up and be able to print the lessons you just had. For physics. For physics. Oh, okay. nice. Nice. What day is today? What Tuesday. day is today? And when, and when is it not this week anymore? Friday. After Friday. After Friday. Friday. Yeah, so, you will have it. so you will have it before Friday. No, Sunday is next week. Why? Sunday is after Sunday. Yeah, Sunday is after Sunday.
Sunday's yeah. next week. The Sunday. First day of correct. Yeah, first day of the week. Well, the Monday is the first day of the week. Sunday is. is Why the Sunday? Why? That's the rule. Just yes, yeah, very good. It's the rule. <laughs> Sunday is the first day. Yeah. It's exactly <laughs> like that. Monday is the first day. No, I already said Monday is the first day. Yes, yeah, Monday is the first day. Yeah. Sunday is the last. Thank you. There's a lot of Irish Japanese. I don't know. It's not an Irish thing. It's, it's, it's a Western it's thing. It's Sunday is the first day. Why don't we go to work on that? Oh, the war. Always. Sunday? Mm hmm. Is the first day. Why? Why was the work end on Sunday? No, the reason is not. religious. Yeah, the reason is religious. Correct. Yeah, the God made the people at the sixth day, and He take a rest on yeah. the seventh day. And the seventh, seventh day is yeah. Saturday. Seventh day is the Sunday. No, because which religion? No, no, think, think, no, think very carefully, Chrissy. <laughs> Chrissy, <laughs> Chrissy, think very carefully. Which religion is all this? Judaism, Jews, Christians, or Muslims? Jews. And the story about resting on the seventh day mm -hmm. is Jewish in origin. And which day of the week do Jews not work? Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, Saturday is the seventh day, the rest day. And it's also called Sabbath, which sounds like Thank <laughs> 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 <laughs>